thanks so much for staying with us. We are thrilled that you did. Hope you drug somebody else into the room with you to watch us and to hear the Word of God because we have been hearing the Word of God sung. We've been hearing the Word of God preached and it has been very good and we're going to have more of it. Heartstrings is still going to be singing for us and we still have Reverend Bruce Sullivan with us. He's going to be sharing more and you know, I just appreciate his stand for God's Word. Our prayer partners are still with us, so you can call the number that will be on your screen. And also, we do need uh, more prayer partners, so pray about it. And if it's something you feel like God is leading you to do, then you can call 244-1616 to find out more. Um, but right now, we are going to be hearing more from Pastor Bruce Sullivan, more about God's Word. Thank you, Sister Patty. I, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned the whole theme about tonight in all three of these sections has been about the second coming of the Lord, and we mentioned in the last section how that before Jesus has come back, Jesus comes back. One of the telltale signs of that is that there will be abounding iniquity. We talked about how the world around us, that those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, can clearly see that the world around us is plunging further into paganism. It's going further and further away from God and, and the abnormal is becoming normal. But as the world devolves into paganism, it's going to mean that those that live by the laws of God are going to stand out more. It's just natural. I mean, yeah. the darker the world becomes, the more conspicuous light becomes. It just stands out more. You know, I could light a, a match in this room and nobody would pay that much attention to it. Mm -hmm. Well, those that don't want the place burned down may, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, because of all the lights that are here. But if you cut out that light, immediately that match is going to show out. Me and my wife, we evangelized in our early years of, of ministry out in the West, uh, around Montana and Wyoming and through there. And it's just so different because you can go miles in between towns, miles in between yes. towns. Mm -hmm. And so at nighttime, when... It turns night. If it's a clear night, you can look up in the sky and those stars are just everywhere. And they're, they were there the whole time. Mm -hmm. But when the light goes out and you don't have all these other artificial lights around like you have in a city, they just stand out. And I think that's the way it's going to be with, with uh, the, the people of God in the last days. You chose as a Christian to follow God. That's choosing to follow the narrow way. The, the majority of the world's on a, a different road. They're on the wide road that leads to destruction, but you chose to get on a narrow way. That meant you chose a different path. That means you chose to be different. And so the word that I really had for people tonight that I felt like I wanted, I couldn't get away from it, is the idea of embrace being different. Embr I wish somebody would have told me that when I was a teenager at church. Embrace being different. You are different. Yeah. You know, you go to school and you try so hard. I remember doing, I look back, you ever look back at things you did in high school oh, and yes. go, oh man, <laughs> what was I doing? I was trying so hard to fit in with everybody else. Yeah. But the reality is, as a Christian, as a citizen of God's kingdom, you're not going to fit into this world because you're not of this world anymore. That's right. Jesus said, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. The Bible uses terms for Christians like aliens. <laughs> I mean, think about that. You're an alien. Uh, strangers, strangers, mm -hmm. uh, pilgrims, sojourners. You're just passing through. You don't really, you don't really belong here in this world. Uh, and and because we're not of this world, and our, our we've been transformed by being born again into a new creature, we're different than other people. And, and the worse the world gets, the more we're going to stand out because, because of that. Uh, every now and then, you know, uh, I'll go to the mall and, and just I like to watch people. I don't like being by myself. My wife used to travel a lot. And when she'd travel, I'd go to the mall at night because I don't, don't like just sitting there by myself. <laughs> And so every now and then at the mall, I'll see somebody, and it's obvious when I look at them, that they're not from here. You know, you'll see some woman in some brightly colored dress and a little red dot in the middle of her forehead, and you're going, not from here. 
But you could take that same woman and take her back to her home country and set her down on one of the main streets and no one would even notice her because she fits in perfectly there. It's just because she's been transported from where, she, where it is normal to some place where it isn't normal. It isn't the way we dress. They talk and their accent's different. And so the Bible tells us that's the way we are as Christians, as citizens of God's kingdom. We've been put into this world and now we're just different. You know, we think different. We, we talk different. Our, our, our clothes are different. Um, uh, you know, you're, you're meant as a Christian, as a child of God, that you've heard the term, they march to the drumbeat of a different drummer. Yeah. And you think about that, it's like everybody's hearing this, but you're hearing, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're marching to a different, because you hear something different. Mm -hmm. A child of God uh, does hear something different. The world around you is dark and you've seen the light and you're meant to stand out. The Bible says a city that's set upon a hill cannot be hid. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that you're, you're as conspicuous as a city set up on a hill that you're obviously going to stand out and you're going, you're going to be different. We're, we've become citizens of God's kingdom. We've submitted to God's rule. We've committed ourselves to living our lives by a, the standard of God instead of the standard of the world around us. Our laws are different. Our morals are different. In fact, we become Christians. We come out of that world. And one of the things we have to do is we have to renew our minds because we used to think this way. Now we take the word of God and we renew our thinking to think like God wants us to think. And when we became citizens of his kingdom, we agreed to abide by his laws and the decrees of God. Just an example, uh, our view about marriage and what marriage is is different than what the world around us's view of marriage is. Our views of sexual behavior are different than the views of the world around us. And, and I don't know why we should think any different than that. You know, our, our, our determination on, on how we see marriage, how we see sexual behavior are determined by God. It's not determined by what everybody else is doing. It's not determined by what everybody else is saying. And so we're, we're completely different and our, our culture and practices are different than the world around us. That's not a bad thing to be different. No. How can we be children of God and be light if we're going to be the same as darkness, you know, yeah. we've got to be conspicuous. We've got to be different. I wish somebody again would have told me when I was a teenager, don't try so hard to fit in. You know, yeah. if you're going to be a child of God, stand up and be a child of God. Like me, don't like me. This is what I am. This is, this is, this is who I am. In the Old Testament, uh, Israel, uh, well, the church in the New Testament is called in Galatians, the Israel of God. And then you go back in the Old Testament and you see Israel in the Old Testament and Israel was different. In fact, God says, you're a holy nation. It says the same thing about the church in the New Testament. You're a holy yeah. nation. You're a peculiar people. You're a peculiar people. And uh, the, the children of Israel were different than all the nations around them. You know, when, when a nation uh, forms, people get together and they decide, okay, what's going to be the basis of our laws, our constitution? The United States, for example, had constitutional congresses and, and conferences where they got together and decided, what's going to be the, our constitution, the basis of our laws? That's the way most every nation does. At some point, they get together and decide what their laws are. But Israel was not that way. Israel was different. Yeah. Moses went up on a mountain and God gave him his laws and yeah. said, bring them down. And they, he read them and they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do. That was the basis of them becoming a nation. And we're going to abide by the laws of God. So while everybody around them and all the other cultures around them were living by these other laws, uh, Israel was living by their own law, living by the law of God. See, when you became a Christian and you entered into God's kingdom, you agreed to abide by God's laws. And God's laws are different than the laws of this world. And they're becoming more and more different <laughs> than the law. Used to be there were some similarities. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's becoming less and less similarities between the laws of, uh, and the morals of our country around us and the world around us. True. It's becoming more different. And, mm -hmm. and because of that, we're becoming, we're becoming different. And, and, and we're meant to be different. What, what, did the Bible, what does the Bible say? It says, come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Yes. Touch not the unclean thing. Mm -hmm. 
And so what he's talking about coming out from among the, the idolaters and the pagans and and, and I, I'm just saying that in the sense, I don't mean to insult anybody, but I'm just saying that people that, that are not Christians, they don't see what we see. They're walking in darkness. We're walk, we've seen something they haven't seen. Yeah. We've heard something they haven't heard. Mm -hmm. And so we start living by that, and then we, we become different. Well, you look at Israel uh, when, when they went into the land of Canaan. What did God's constant warning to them? Don't mess with these other nations. Yeah. Don't let their culture begin to influence you. Yes. Man, why does God put that there? That's Old Testament stuff. Why do we even talk about it? Because it's applying to us as a new nation today, a holy nation today. Yeah. That we're not to, don't be influenced by what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what they're, well, you yeah, the majority, you're not on the wide road. Yeah. You chose to walk a different path. Amen. And that's okay. I want my speech to be different than the world around me. Amen. You know, the Bible says, let your, your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Um, let no, uh, no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of the You hear all kinds of cursing and all kinds of filth coming out of people's mouth. You're not to go to work and talk like they talk. You're supposed to talk different than them. Yeah. Your faith in God and in a, and a belief in eternity, that affects the way you spend your money. I mean, it really does. It should. Mm -hmm. How you spend your time? What are you doing going to church? Don't you know the lakes out there and it's Sunday and you're <laughs> off and you can go out there? Why would you go? Because my priorities are different. Yeah. You know, uh, even it even affects the way you dress yourself. Uh, you know, it's it, I'm just not. Paul and Peter both talked about you know, character is what matters to me. The outside. Mm -hmm. You know, but to the world that's all about image, but to us it's all about character. It's about what's in us that, that matters to God. And so we, again, I want to tell you to embrace being different. And uh, again, the Bible calls us aliens. And I want, to, I want to warn you about this. I want to warn everybody, every Christian about this. We are aliens, but I'm afraid before it's over with, we're going to be illegal aliens. Because not only is, are we different than the world around us, but the world's becoming more hostile mm -hmm. yes. toward citizens of the kingdom of God. They're prejudiced against the people who are citizens of the kingdom of God. Um, uh, you, you look around you and you say, well, I, I can give you a perfect example. You can go out there. I could say something about what we believe about marriage. Well, how do you think people are going to react? <laughs> There's a hostility out there. Yeah, I, how dare you say that? Talk about what you believe about sexual purity. And they, how, do they, how do they respond to that when you say, well, now this is the laws of God. They're not just rejecting that. They're angry at that. There's a hostility. And it shouldn't surprise us again because in the last days, the Antichrist is going to rise up mm -hmm. who opposes mm -hmm. and exalts himself above all that is Thank called you. God. Yeah. So that spirit taking over in the world is making the world more and more hostile toward, toward Christians. And there's a lot of pressure to conform. There's a lot of pressure on ministers. There's a lot of pressure on churches. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure on in individual Christians. Just give in and, and accept the world's view and the world's morals and the world's ideas of right and wrong. And so we're going to have to have backbone. Jesus, in, in talking to the people in his day, when there was a lot of adversity against him, mm -hmm. uh, against his followers, he says, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, mm -hmm. and the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. Luke's part, uh, when he says it, he says, every man presses his way into it. A lot of opposition. You're going to have to press your way into God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to push your way through all of the, the, the adversity that's going to come upon you. Jesus said, they're, they hated me. Why in the world would you think they're not going to hate you? That's right. mm -hmm. They're going to hate you if, you if you stand for what he stands. And Jesus says, they don't hate you, they hate me. It's just you're the messenger and you get in the way, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the, the reality is, as a, as a child of God, when you become a citizen of God's kingdom, you embrace the fact, I'm different. Yeah, you better believe I'm different. Mm -hmm. And you know what I think? I think there's a lot of people out there that have traveled that wide road and seen where it led, and they're yeah. tired of that road. Yes. And we're wanting to show them there's a different way you can live your life. Mm -hmm. uh, Boy, I, I hope anybody listening to me today will realize that. God didn't make up his laws to restrict your fun. 
<laughs> God made his laws to protect you. And if you go against the laws of God, trouble comes. And when that trouble comes, what you've got to realize is I need to get off of this path. And I need to get on the right path, the path of righteousness. There's a wisdom to following the, the laws of God. So again, you're going to be ostracized by the world. Choose to walk the different path and don't be afraid. That's it. Amen. And you know, we're not different just because we're different, just for the sake of being different. It, it's not that kind of thing. I've seen people do that before, but um, it's not that, that we're just trying to be different from everybody. It's that when Jesus Christ comes into our hearts and lives, it is the Spirit of God Himself mm -hmm. who lives inside of us, and we can't mm -hmm. help but be different. Mm -hmm. And it's a good different. Mm -hmm. It's a freeing mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of different. Mm -hmm. Heartstrings is going to sing for us again the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire, through darkest nights. You've been close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my Oh, God is faithful. The goodness Amen. of God never ceases. Amen. I am so grateful for that song. Yes. Great, great song about the goodness of God. 
And God is so good. And I have oh, in yeah. my hand here a salvation report. Praise God. And I thank God for his faithfulness in saving this lady. Amen. I thank God that she is in the kingdom of God now and her life Praise can God. be changed absolutely and completely to know Jesus Christ oh, yeah. more Praise and more. God. And there are a lot of requests. There's a praise report that one is just saying, I just thank God for helping me to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Praise and you God. know, we can, all of those of us who have given our lives to Jesus, we can say that. Thank God Amen. for just moving in my heart and drawing me Amen. toward Him. Scott, I know you have some requests there too. Yeah, we, we've got a, a person here who's got blood clots and and, and bleeding and need prayer for healing. Um, here's another one that um, has a doctor's appointment. They, they want some protection and, and need prayer for that. Uh, one here has a bad heart and they were in a car wreck also. Um, one who's having some, some different kinds of studies, who's having a heart cath tomorrow and also a swallow study or something that needs mm -hmm. prayer. Um, just just goes on and on this list. God loves you. He knows all about every need that you have. Let's pray. Would you pray over yes. those? Father, as we lay hands upon these requests tonight, Father, we pray that yes. your Holy yes. Spirit is moving and working in every life tonight, Father. We know it because your word tells us, Lord, that you're touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And Lord, it was by your stripes that we were healed. So Father God, we pray over these in the name of Jesus and pray and believe healing is taking place in their lives, Father, right now. We thank you for the salvation reports and God, a praise report of salvation, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you and we give you the glory, give you the honor, give you the praise for all that you're doing, Lord, right now that you hear us because your word says that you hear us and that we have the petitions that we desire of you tonight. In Jesus' name, praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. You know, I want to share something with you that I shared with the ladies Bible study because we need to keep our faith rooted in Christ Jesus. Amen. If we begin to back up, if we begin to let the, the devil tell us, you better be scared because this is going to happen to you, we need to remember something. And one thing is from Andy Andrews who said, for me, faith will always be a sounder guide than reason. Because reason can only go so far. Faith has no limits. You can reason out a situation, that mountain they were singing about, that mountain that you can't get over, through, or around. You can reason it out all you want to and you won't come up with a solution. But you put your faith in God and I want to tell you, this is what I told them. Faith in God will take you places the enemy says you can't go. Faith in God will win victories that the enemy says you can't win. Faith in God will keep you, it will sustain you through trials that the enemy says you can't endure. So when you hear the voice of the enemy saying you can't go there, you can't win this. You can't endure this. Don't listen to him. You're a child of God if you've given your life to Jesus. Amen. And when you're a child of God, you don't have to listen to the voice of the enemy. You can listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit living inside of you and know without doubt that the goodness of God is there for you and he'll take care of you. Now, who is the enemy that wants to see us just destroyed? Of course, it's Satan. That's who our enemy is. And he tries to defeat us with fear. He'll cause fear to rise up in you. He'll even tell you, don't give your life to Jesus Christ. 
do you know what will happen to you if you do? I'm, I'm, you'll have to be different, like the pre preacher was saying. But it's such a good different. Don't listen to the fear that the devil's feeding you. Don't listen to it. Go to the Word of God and see what God says. We can defeat this enemy with faith in Jesus Christ and with the love of God that He will put inside of us and that He gives us of Himself. When you think about those of us who have given our lives to Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit, part of the Godhead inside of us, God spoke and it happened. The world was created. Whatever God speaks, whatever God does, whatever God says, it will happen. So have faith in God. Don't let the enemy bring you down. Don't let the enemy keep you from surrendering your life completely to Jesus Christ. Don't let him do it. There is so much that God wants to do inside of you. And there's so much he wants to do through you. So don't miss out on that. Okay, don't miss out on it. There is the love of God. There is the grace of God. There is the power of God. And remember too that as Christians, we are different. We are different because we have the Spirit of God living inside of us. And if we'll just open up ourselves and not be selfish with our own things, we can allow the Spirit of God to work through us and do wonderful things. Things that we would be afraid to do normally, we can do if the Spirit of God is working in us. We can defeat the enemy Amen. with faith in God. I want to remind you again that the hymn sing from March 7th with Stacy Morris and Billy Jump will be re-aired in two days, okay? <laughs> two days. Thursday night's Nightline, that's March 23rd, and I hope that you can tune in for that. We enjoyed singing those hymns. They have rich, rich meanings to those hymns. And, mm -hmm. and I hope that you can join in with that and just sing right along as we're singing. And praise God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you in His care until we meet again on the next Nightline. Mm -hmm.